same, Derek Jones. Absolutely. All right. Uh, guys, I'm Randy Brochu. Um, really excited to be joining Jonesy in the booth this year for the video streams and covering you guys in what should be a, a really a really fun year with uh, the news that Jonesy just gave us. I want to direct this one to the captains, and it's a general one. Um, just your general thoughts about kind of, uh, you know, rejoining the Big East, you know, those historical rivals that you've heard about but not experienced, um, and the opportunity to, to play Big East baseball now. Yeah, I can start us off. Um, I, think it's, I think it's really exciting. I think it's really exciting, especially when you talk about the uh, those rivalries, right? Those rivalries that you also know from basketball and from other sports that kind of go back decades. I think that's gonna be really exciting. I think there's also a cool aspect about staying in the Northeast a lot of the times and kind of claiming that territory. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be a, a really cool experience. It's obviously something me and Christian haven't experienced before, even though we've been here for a while. And uh, I could pass it off to Christian. What do you think? Yeah, I think going off of Chris, I think it's going to be really cool to be able to renew those Big East rivalries that we've heard so much about. Um, hearing from guys early on, like even Coach Penders played in the Big East, and he still keeps his Big East conference trophy in his um, office and stuff. And I've heard so many good things about the conference that I think it's going to be an awesome opportunity. And, you know, we get to play at Creighton, too, which is in Omaha, which is kind of sick. Yep. So there's, like, a bunch of cool little nuances about the Big East. Um, I remember playing some of those teams my freshman year. Like, for instance, we played St. John's, I remember, my freshman year. And there was, like, it was a really, really tough series, and it was a lot of fun. So I specifically remember that series playing a Big East team. But I'm, uh, I'm pumped to go in the Big East. Gavin, you had your, your hand up. Feel free, fire away. This is for Chris. Uh, how much better prepared do you think you guys are for the season having Elliot Park to work out in, uh, you know, the past couple months? Hey, Gavin. I think it's been an unreal asset. Um, I could probably barely count on two hands the amount of days where due to rain or snow, if we were playing on J.O. Christian, we would have been inside. And the amount that we can do inside, we could do a lot inside, but it really doesn't compare to what we can get, get done on, on, a, on a real field. And also, not just the field, but the new facilities, five batting cages over two, is it's – we are – I would say we're more prepared for this year than we've, we've ever been before, just for the purposes of facility-wise. Thanks. Uh, I'll go next. Um, ben, this one's for you. Um, so like uh, like Chris said, you know, you're going to kind of be leaned on to be the ace this year. Um, how excited are you for that challenge, just knowing the history, especially recent history of aces at UConn going on to the to the next level? Yeah, um, thank you. I mean, it's definitely an honor. Um, and, you know, our pitching staff, you know, we're – we're led by coach Mack and he's, he's the best in the business. I mean, there's not a single thing I think anybody could say poorly about him. Um, and it's fun playing for him. It's fun coach or playing for a coach who's so invested in us. And um, it's a true honor. I'm really excited about it. And Friday or Saturday couldn't come soon enough. So can't wait. Uh, with Ben too, what did you learn last year from sitting out that you think you're really excited to utilize this season, being able to play for your first time in two yep. years? Yeah, um, I think, you know, I think one of the special things during quarantine is obviously it was pretty unfortunate for, you know, not me, but for the guys, just the season getting shortened. Um, but it was kind of a period, too, where I was on my own for the most part, and I kind of got to see, you know, week to week what it looks like getting ready for every start and just figuring out, you know, there's stuff that needs to be, do be done every single day and stuff in order to get my body right and kind of just like my, my nutrition and everything around that, so... I'm excited to get like going and rolling towards the season. Um, and I think really the last year has helped like kind of get everybody prepared for taking on those roles and, you know, just being more mature in those, in those instances away from the coaches or away from other guys and just doing what needs to be done to be ready and stay ready. What are some examples of those, that you, those things that you have done to stay ready for this moment? Yeah, I just think um, like in the weight room, I, I got with a really good trainer over the past year. Um, 
and a lot of the the weightlifting and, and kind of mobility work has shifted towards pitching completely rather than on both sides of the ball this year. Um, and I think just I really hunkering down on recovery. Um, it was something that as a two way, like my arm was probably a little bit more conditioned naturally just throwing with the infielders and then tra translating it to the mound. So this was one of the first times too, where I've really got to regiment my throwing throughout the course of the week and leading up to the season. So I'm really excited about that. Luke. You're on mute, Luke. Hi, Ben. <laughs> um, so first off, Luke from uh, the UConn blog, nice to meet you. Meet you. What does it mean to uh, rep UConn, flagship university of the state, as someone who was Gatorade, Gatorade Player of the Year at UConn and uh, was one of the best pitchers in Connecticut in high school ball for a while? Yeah, um, I think it's really cool. I, obviously, like I attended UNC my first two years, um, and there was just something about coming back to you know, Connecticut and being in the Northeast. And I, I remember my visit, it was in, I think it was in like mid June or early June at the time. And I kind of just fell in love with this place uh, right when I got here. And I think the first thing I noticed was when we came, when I came into the, the weight room with coach Horgan and coach Penders, um, everybody just looked like they were having fun in the weight room. And obviously they were 50 games into the season. So something that was kind of new to me in terms of like the energy level and what I was seeing. So Honestly, it's been great to be back closer to home too. And obviously I, I had bonds with almost all the guys and the majority of the team before even like stepping foot on campus. So it's been a really fun last two years and I'm excited to see, you know, what we can do this year. Now with the kind of extended season this year, uh, 60, 60 ish games instead of the usual 50 uh, mid fifties games. Do uh, you think that'll mean more starts for you or, is it going to be more shifted towards some of the back end guys or how will you guys as a staff kind of manage that? Do you think? Yeah, I think we're lucky this year too. Um, I mean, we're really deep. It's going to be like, uh, I like the coaches have been saying the past couple of days, like this might be, this is the first time they've had this or the most guys they've ever had to keep home. Um, and they're all, and they're all, they're going to be a bunch of guys who are, who are contending for bids to pitch on the weekend or be a mid midweek starter. So everybody's ready. I think we're, we're lucky in terms of having Caleb in the back of the bullpen, Reggie in the back of the bullpen, uh, Andrew Marrero in the back of the bullpen. So like, we're going to have assurance for really the entire game. And it's going to help us a lot too, if we're playing four game series. So I know we're all looking forward to that, especially coach Mac. Thank you. Yep. Gavin, did you have another? Yes, I did. It's for uh, Kyler. Uh, you guys obviously have big expectations, you know, your preseason favorite. How are you kind of going to deal with the expectations this year? Hey, Gavin, thank you. Um, you know what? It's just like, it's just like come, come and do your job every day. It's, it's not really an individual thing. Like with all these awards coming out, I mean, it's easy to like lose sight of like the team and like the bonds that we have as like a, a community. So it's, it's more just like staying together, doing our thing and just just doing what we know best so i would say it's not really like it's not really like a pressure coming to a new conference and like being the favorite it's kind of just like do what we know how to do and everyone do their job having last season cut short does it make start of this season you more excited than ever for this season absolutely i mean uh, the season cutting short last year i mean we were, we were off to such a hard hot start i mean especially especially beating michigan in the way that we did I mean, we kind of, we handled them pretty good. And like that, that really fired us up for that season. So to have that cut short and like the expectations we had for last season, I mean, we're just, we're bringing those expectations into this season. So I would say that definitely last season being cut short, definitely amped up the energy for this season. And being able to be together more is with, you know, being a practice at Elliott and everything, does that help with the team chemistry? Absolutely. I mean, like, like Chris was saying, just, just being outside, being in that baseball environment more like being inside, like it, yeah, you can do a lot, but like you can't mimic baseball like activity at, like you can on a field. And for how much we've been on a field this winter, it's definitely helped our chemistry a ton. And just one more, I assume you probably face Ben and, and workouts and everything. What's that like facing him? Oh my gosh. Well, I always have to face him at eight or nine in the morning, like 30 minutes after waking up, like just with an energy drink popped minimal food so it is it is the worst experience i've had to face this fall and this this winter i mean he probably has struck me out 
10 of the last 12 at bats. And it makes me so mad. I would, I would love to face the kid on a Friday night. Like you're supposed to, I want to face him at six o'clock under the nights. Energy's up. Tensions are high, but no fa- facing him. It's, it's really tough. And I'm, I'm really glad that I don't have to face him again. You just do. That's all then look at it that way. I agree. I agree. <laughs> but maybe sometime down the road, but I am very happy. I don't have to face him again this year. Thanks. Danny. Uh, yeah, I, I got one for, uh, for Reggie. Um, so you obviously got off to a great start uh, your freshman season, although this, I guess this is technically still your freshman season, but what, what, what do you think that you gained from that, you know, month of playing last year that, that, that'll really help you this season? How's it going, Danny? Thank you. Um, I mean, I got to dip my toes in the water. I got to see what it was like to, to play some college baseball, even though it was just a couple of games. Um, I got to get some advice from the, from the guys, um, just see what it was like just playing every weekend. Um, it was just, it was, it was a lot of fun and having it cut short just makes me want to, and everybody else just want to work so much harder to have a really good season this year. So. Yeah. And I guess, uh, what are your expectations for yourself, you know, at the plate and even getting on the mound maybe this year? Um, I, for me, I just try to take care of everything that I possibly can. I don't really, I'm not like a big goal guy for myself. Um, I just like to take care of the things that control. And then, I mean, I just just have awesome expectations for the team. Awesome. Thanks. Maggie. Yeah, this is for Chris, you know, coming back this year after having what happened last year, why come back? You know, why do you, yeah, why use this extra year and what makes this year so different knowing that, you know, eight months ago, no one knew if we were going to, if we were going to have a season. Hi Maggie. Um, when, so the, the season getting cut short was tragic. So unfortunate. Um, but then think about if I was going to come back, it was, it was easy to, it was it ended up being an easy decision, just simply weighing the pros and cons. Um, because the pros so outweighed the cons. Just thinking about because I knew I knew who was coming back. I knew that we had a really good chance to really do something special this year. I knew we were going to be playing in a brand new ballpark. I knew we were going to be practicing every day in a brand new facility. Um, get to play another year with my brother, which is something awesome. Just just think about those things. It's there really was no, really no, no choice after thinking about those. Do you have any like personal goals for this season? My personal goal is to make this the longest UConn baseball season ever. That's my personal goal. Uh, Luke. I'm not muted this time. Um, Ben, what do you have to, to have for breakfast and what time do you have to in the morning to strike out the uh, preseason player of the year, Kyler Fedko. Every, um, day, every week. Yeah, it was it was it was an interesting fall just because I mean there's going to be very few times I think just a lot like down the road throwing at 9 a.m. So you know being comfortable at that time I think you know makes things a little bit easier when the season starts and we're playing at you know three o'clock, two o'clock, or or six p.m. But um, for me, I was waking up on Saturday morning at like between like five thirty and six. Um, and in the training room by like 6:45, just getting you know getting my body ready, and um, I don't know. Usually, I don't eat I don't eat that much before games. So usually, just a protein shake, a water, maybe a banana. But um, yeah, no, just getting the, my body going early in the morning, and you know, making nine o'clock feel like a twelve o'clock start was big for me. Um, and just you know, just staying ready throughout the week, like I said, just to give myself the best chance to you know feel good and do everything I can to help the team win. This one's for Pat. So over two years ago, when you decided to attend UConn, did you ever think that you would get a, almost three whole seasons playing with your brother? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't think that at all. Um, you know, we were hoping to get at least two, just like we did in high school. Um, and then, you know, certain events happened, COVID cutting the season short. Uh, my injury kind of took one away. But, uh, you know, we're super fortunate to, to have him back for another year. And I think, you know, it certainly helps me stay focused and, and stay kind of prepared, but you know, it helps the team a whole lot more. Um, so, you know, selfishly, I'm glad he's back, but I know the team is going to benefit, you know, tremendously from him being back as well. 
Danny? Uh, yeah, actually, also for Pat, I, I guess you're one of the few people that actually maybe benefit a little bit from the season getting, you know, cut off last year. You know, you had a chance to fully recover. You didn't really have to miss, you know, much time. I guess, how are you, how are you feeling now? Uh, and what are your expectations uh, for this season? I'm uh, feeling really good. Uh, my rehab is completely done. Finished that in the fall. Uh, was really happy with how that went. Um, you know, it was. It's great to have the the medical staff that we have at school, um, from the trainers to the physical therapists. You know, everyone was fantastic, and uh, you know, really gave me the tools to to get where I needed to be as quick as possible. Um, and I guess just kind of building off of you know where I was freshman year and helping the team as much as possible. Um, you know, I think we have something really special this year and, and, and being able to be back in the lineup to help is, uh, you know, a dream come true. I'm ex extremely excited to be back. And, um, you know, I think we're going to do really good things. Gavin, did you have another? Yes. For Caleb, is she there? Yeah. How you doing, Gavin? Yeah, pretty good. Can you just talk about the depth of the pitching staff and what excites you the most about it? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we just got a guy that can do everything, it seems. Um, you know, we got guys out of the pen who can throw hard, who throw maybe less hard, but still hard. Uh, we got guys with arm side run and great sliders and great breaking balls and change ups. Um, and I just think like every guy does something just a little bit better than the other guy does. Um, you know, just in, in terms of uh, attacking hitters inside, uh, continually filling up the strike zone. We just have so many guys who do that and um, who are able to come with their off speed and, and throw it for strikes and throw it in, in behind counts. Um, it just makes us lethal. Um, and uh, obviously we've talked about the bullpen a little bit, but even just beyond myself and, and the other guys in this call, like we have just guys on guys on guys who are going to get innings for us and get, get huge outs for us. Um, so in, in terms of that, like we, we know what our bullpen has done in the past and, and how that's led to some of our success. Um, and because of that, I'm just that much more excited about this year, knowing the depth that we have in our bullpen. And how's the new facility and field kind of help the pitchers kind of make good progress heading into the season? Yeah. I mean, there's something about, um, you know, pushing off a turf, fake mound versus a real mound uh, that's fixed into the ground and you got grandstands behind it. You know, it's, it's not the same um, when you're indoors and you've got a, a 10 foot wide, 65 foot long tunnel with surrounded by nets and it's just you and a hitter. Um, it doesn't feel quite the same as when you got uh, seven other guys behind you and um, grandstands, grandstands behind the batter. It's, it's just, it's a totally different feel um, and being able to have those facilities this year and being out there and having as game-like situations as possible, um, not even just the view, but then you've got, you know, base runners, you've got guys working on holding guys on, working on, um, you know, systems and looks and all these different things um, that you wouldn't have necessarily inside or is, is incredibly difficult to mimic inside at the very least. Um, having those facilities just makes it that much more refined in practice and feel like you, this is real. This is very real. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is for Kyler. You know, um, Chris has been a captain now three seasons, two and a half, three seasons. What makes him such a good captain? And why is that a role that he has gone so often? Hi, Maggie. So the best answer to that is just, he is just so well equipped with like, the knowledge of our program. He has been here for so long. He has everything just down to a T. So it's almost like he's a player, but at the same time, he's like almost like a mentor, like a coach. Like he's so, he's so refined in the knowledge of our program. Like it, it just makes him such, such a veteran and being here for fifth, fifth year. It's just, he's just, he's just a great mentor and, and also a friend too. So you can connect with, with him on that level as a friend and as a mentor too. So I would say that's what makes him a great captain. Awesome, thank you. Yep. Any, any final ones for the players before we, we bring coach in? Uh, Jonesy, I just got one for the Winkles. I wanted to ask you, you guys coming from that great Amity program that uh, actually growing up in New Britain, we have a lot of respect for you guys just find a way to you know, have great years year after year after year when championships seems year after year, that winning pedigree, what does that do for you 
and your careers in college here at UConn? Uh, I can start off um, on this one, Pat. Uh, I think coming from such an awesome program, such an awesome uh, coach in South Coppola and uh, kind of winning tradition there, it, it, it kind of sets you up for the way they go about their business is college-like, right? So going through um, the Amity Baseball program gives you a taste of what is going to be expected at the next level. And I feel like me and Pat, when we got here, we knew what to expect. Um, and that was, that was a big step up, I think. Pat? Yeah, I think going off of what Chris said, I think that's exactly right. Um, you know, it's a very good step before college baseball. Um, the coaches kind of understand what's going to be asked of you and tailor the program to mimic that the best that they can, uh, whether that be lifting as a team throughout the off season, uh, the way they run practices is very professional, breaking up into different positions and doing position specific work and then coming together at the end to do kind of team reps. Um, I got on campus here and I'm sure Chris can say the same thing and realize one, the workouts were pretty similar, a little more basic, but a lot of the movements were the same and the emphasis were the same. Uh, but also to the way that practices were run were, were, were pretty similar. Um, so yeah, it gave a really good taste. And I, I think, um, you know, just really got us both prepared. Thank you. Luke, do you have a player or are you raising for coach? You're on mute. Just one last one for a player. Uh, Reggie, we always hear a lot about competition between pitchers and uh, the hitters in practice and fall ball. How big is competition between hitters for those lineup spots? Or as everyone kind of kind of know their role, or is there a lot of heated competition between them? What's uh, how's that like? How's it going, Luke? Um, I would say there's a ton of com competition. I mean, our lineup is just filled with competitors. Um, we love to compete, and with the depth this year, I mean, everybody's fighting for a spot. I, I wouldn't say anything set yet, but um, it just makes everyone want to work so much harder since there is so much depth. And since everyone just wants to compete with one another to make one another better. You've had an extra year. You might still be a freshman, but you're not a, not really a, a rookie anymore. So well, what do you think you can show everyone this year out of your bag that, uh, that you kind of, you might've held back last year. Um, this off season, I would say I was working on, bring some more power into the games. Uh, last year, I was just trying to get my average up, hit the ball well, and um, I'm trying to implement like hitting with some power as well this year. You worked on season specifically to get that power up? Just getting stronger and um, just trying to take advantage of some pitches that I could really drive. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Um, you guys don't need to stick around and, and listen to coach. You hear him all the time. Uh, so I appreciate the time. Um, we'll transition over. Uh, coach Penders needs no introduction entering his 18th year, uh, all time winning as coach in UConn uh, baseball history. Um, coach, if you want to just give an opening statement and then, uh, and then we'll start taking questions. Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you all for taking the time to be here. We appreciate your coverage and uh, your interest in our program and uh, value that. And uh, please, you know, don't hesitate if there's, if there's any way that we can help you. Um, you know, Jonesy does a great job of keeping us connected, but I know a lot of you uh, have, have contacted me directly in the past. That's, uh, if you've done that in the past, continue to do it. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I have no, no issues with that at all. Uh, I'm looking very much, I, I have never looked forward to a season as much as I've looked forward to this one. Um, it's been the longest off season of my life. And uh, I think for, for most of us, you know, from not playing a game since, since mid-March, it's, uh, it's been difficult. Uh, that lack of competition um, has, uh, has been a strain. Uh, along with a lot of other things, you know, <laughs> with regard to COVID and our current situation, but um, we're we're just chomping at the bit to get going and see a different uniform. Uh, I like our our um, our ball club's talent level. I think it's one of the most talented teams we've had in a long time, and uh, that that has to be balanced with the fact that every one of our opponents are probably going to be the most talented they've been 
in a very long time. And that's because of the way the draft was structured last year and a lot of seniors back that probably wouldn't have been back normally. So there's, there's more talent in college baseball, I think, than ever before. Uh, the 2021 season should have the most talent we've ever had in the college ranks. So uh, there's going to be challenges that come with that. But uh, I like the hand that we've been dealt. Um, with that said, you know, it's an incredibly competitive schedule, um, not just in the but in our early going and in the midweeks. We've got some really quality opponents in the Northeast right now, too, um, that we're going to, you know, we're going to be uh, challenged by. So um, always, uh, always optimistic, but uh, it's it's we're, we're, we're biting off a lot in the early going with, um, you know, Virginia, with Southern Miss, with Coastal Carolina, um, with uh, with Texas Tech. It, uh, I can't imagine anybody in the country with a, a much more difficult schedule than that in the early going. So, uh, but in, with that said, we're very excited to, to try to tackle it and get going and, and see a different uniform as soon as possible. Gavin. Hey, good morning, Jim. How you doing? Hey, Gav. Good. How do, you, how, how do you guys think you're better prepared going into the season, you know, having the field to practice on during the winter? Yeah, the field has been a godsend and not just in the winter, but being able to stay on it into November. I mean, we really had to because we had a lot of guys out with COVID in September and we kind of delayed our fall as a result. We wouldn't have been able to do that at J.O. Christian Field. And we probably got in at least five or six full workouts that we would not have been able to conduct in falls past due to, you know, not having an artificial surface or not having lights. And in the preseason, you know, just we're going to get out there today, you know, and it's cold, but we're going to be out there for about an hour just to get balls on a real diamond, um, ground balls on a real diamond, get some drill work in. And um, it's been a godsend. It's uh, to be outside in the elements, too, uh, will get us more prepare prepared. Uh, oftentimes in the first couple of games, our outfielders struggle just seeing the ball up against the sky because they they never get a chance to do that until our first game. Um, we've had a chance to do that an awful lot um, over the last several weeks. So uh, very much looking forward to, and we've been relatively, you know, knock on wood, we've been healthy um, for, for the most part. And, uh, uh, but the, the field, not just the field, Gav, but the, 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 we've been so darn efficient, you know, having our clubhouse, our training room, our weight room, our um, coaches, locker room, our coaches' offices, um, our batting cages within paces of the left field fall pole here. So, you know, our guys can be so much more efficient with their time as opposed to when they were changing in the field house and maybe going to the training room in Gamble or in Shankman that day, maybe training in Shankman, maybe training in the barn, maybe practicing on JOC um, and then going to class, you know, the classes are mostly online. A lot, I saw Andy Haig was downstairs doing a, a class just now, and then he's probably going to go hit. So we've just been so much more efficient. And I think the guys have been able to get more quality reps as a result. Yeah, especially the hitters. Does that really help the hitters with the, the game conditions you can play outside? Sure. Yeah. I mean, hitting with cold hands is not fun. Um, pitching is not, you know, all that much fun either, but the hitters have it a little bit tougher, I think, than the pitchers in the cold weather. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's been good. It's been really good. And, and, you know, we have been dealing with some real winter this year uh, as opposed to last year, but we, um, uh, the elements are, are key. You know, the, we always say the elements can't beat us, you know, and I'd, I'd say that, but often early in the season, we would have a built-in excuse because we didn't play in them. Now we don't have that built-in excuse. We've played in plenty of, of bad elements over the last several weeks. Thanks. Yep. Josh. Thanks, Chris. Coach, how are you? Good, Josh. How are you doing? Awesome. Uh, you, you mentioned the schedule and just kind of what everyone's going through with COVID. I guess given all of that for, for this season, how how extra difficult was putting that schedule together? And, and you mentioned just all the local teams that are, that are really strong this year. Just how much has that helped uh, just you guys adjust to maybe what would be so uncertain this year? Yeah, you know, I, it's... Um really competitive teams want to play us. And I guess that's a compliment. So when we do, when we are looking for opponents to play, there's usually not much, there's not a shortage of, of takers. Problem is there's some of the best programs in the country. So, um, you know, when, when we were looking 
we were supposed to go to Cal Berkeley at the beginning of it, the, the trip that we're taking to Texas Tech. This is just to illustrate this point. The trip that we're taking to Texas Tech did not exist until Cal Berkeley called me end of March last year and said, hey, we're going to go to a Pac-12 tournament. It's going to it's going to knock out our weekend that we had planned with you guys. Um, so we wanted to give you a heads up. You know, we're not going to be able to play it because we're going to be playing conference that weekend. Well, it took maybe six hours before Texas Tech was calling me once we put something on a website saying we were looking for that weekend. And, you know, it didn't take long. And I didn't know, you know, there's not much difference between Berkeley, California and Lubbock, Texas. Last time I checked, they're very similar places. Um, not quite, um, but, uh, you know, they are very, they're very good programs. And, um, you know, it's, we have to be, willing to adjust and ready to adjust. I mean, we were supposed to play Hartford for our home opener at Elliott Ballpark. That's not going to happen because Hartford's not playing outside conference games. So um, we're going to have to adjust again. And the, the message to our guys um, is just, hey, we're going to do everything we can to play as many games as we're allowed. And uh, they know that. They know that we're hawks about finding other um, opponents to play. You know, we're going to jump on anything that we uh, think will make us better um in the in the long term uh maybe not in the short term but in the long term and that's what our schedule is is really about so uh the messages is the messages to our players have been to be resilient to be ready to adjust uh follow directions pay attention to detail and a word that we've been using a lot i heard um i think i heard it on c-span um with regard to the impeachment or with regard to the capital uh, um, riot. Uh, one of the, uh, I think it, it was a representative said that they were ready on the house floor, uh, to, uh, to do their jobs with great alacrity. And I didn't know what that meant. So I looked up the word alacrity and I thought it was perf the perfect word to describe the mentality that we must have. So our guys have heard that in many forms. They know that we have to be alacritous and ready with great energy um, and anticipation to, uh, to do our jobs, you know, to the best of our ability. So um, that's been a buzzword, um, you know, for the last month. So they had to, they, I, I made them look it up. I didn't tell them what it meant. So maybe that's, maybe that's a quick assignment for you guys too. <laughs> Sean. Hey coach, uh, thanks for uh, being here. Sean Pergano with Fox 61. Uh, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about recruiting coach um, and maybe how COVID-19 has kind of changed some things. I know UConn, pretty good position as far as recruiting uh, maybe than other schools, but with uh, with with no no high school ball last year and so forth and, and the NCAA rules, can you lend a perspective on uh, the challenges right now with it? Yeah, we've, thanks Sean. Um, we've kind of resisted doing a lot of recruiting during the pandemic, but you know, other people are, so I can't say that we haven't collected some commitments over that time frame. but the commitments that we have taken, we, um, we do everything we can to have seen them in competition before the pandemic. So I don't really want to recruit anybody on a video or on analytics, um, on data points. I want, I need, I need to see how they fail, how they handle pressure. Um, what kind of teammate they are. So we really have, have kind of uh, taken the foot off the gas. You're never not recruiting. I mean, coach McDonald was talking to a young guy this morning on a, on a zoom. So, um, you know, it's, it's, you're never done. You just have to, you have to be willing to maybe you miss out on a couple guys that uh, you would have known more about in years past, but I've learned that especially with the Connecticut baseball player, we are going, if we're going to make a mistake, it's going to be a mistake of we're not sure. So we're not going to recruit you. Um, and I'll be the dummy rather than the jerk, meaning I'm going to be the dummy that didn't recruit the, the hall of famer, the future hall of famer. If I'm not positive that he's a Yukon type guy, uh, especially when they're from Connecticut, as opposed to, I'm not sure, and we take his commitment, and then we have to cut him. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do everything we can to, to uh, avoid that. So we've been uh, a little bit more conservative, I suppose, um, in how we do that, our recruiting. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Danny? 
Yeah. Hi, coach. Um, hey, Danny. Uh, so, yeah, so you mentioned the schedule. You're obviously starting off with a really, really good opponent. I think a top five team in the country with uh, Virginia. I guess this, what are the advantages and disadvantages of starting off the season with a, with an opponent that tough? Did you like that or would you prefer maybe more of a tune up uh, game? No, you have to, if you want to be the best, I mean, ultimately we want to win a national championship here. So you, you got to beat the best you, if, in order to be the best, you have to beat the best. So I, I can't say that if I now it's within reason, if, if we had six freshmen starting this weekend, um, I, I would not want to be scheduling the university of Virginia in the first weekend. Um, we may not have that luxury to know when we're going to have six freshmen on the field. And, and sometimes these schedules are made years and years in advance. But um, this year we have a, a relatively a veteran group that I think can handle it. And they expect to win no matter who we're playing. Um, so uh, that wasn't always the case, you know, 15, 16 years ago. Uh, that, that wasn't always the case. But I think it is the case now. And we want to keep elevating uh, our expectations and our standards. So. Um, I think the only way it can backfire is if, you know, I mean, certainly you can go, go into a buzzsaw and, and get, uh, get humbled pretty quickly, but that means that's what you are. You know, Bill Parcells once said, you are what your record says you are. And, um, I think that's very true. So, uh, you just can't be afraid of that. You know, if, if it doesn't go well, the record doesn't look too good, change it. The only way you're going to do that is if you continue to challenge yourself and play really good people. Yeah, definitely. And then um, you guys had a really good stretch, especially at the end of last year's abbreviated season. I guess, how does that make you feel about this season, considering you have, you know, most of the team back, including some guys you maybe didn't expect to have back, like Chris and Kenny House and, uh, yeah, everyone. Yeah, I, I don't know how much of that stuff carries over. Um, you know, certainly the personnel, there's going to be a lot of familiar faces on the field um, uh, come Friday or Saturday, whenever we, we do wind up playing the first game. But, uh, you know, I, I thought last year we actually played two of our worst games to finish the season, um, to put what wound up being the end of our season, but we won them both. You know, we played very poorly and won. And I thought that was revealing of some good possibilities for last season. I don't think it has anything to do with this season. You know, once that calendar changes, this is a, it's, it's the same program, but a very different team. And that's, I could say that about every single year I've coached. Um, you know, I think the biggest challenges that we've had are with chemistry and uh, you know, with, you know, athletes are very physical in nature and uh, to not be in the same space physically has been a real challenge. I think our freshmen, uh, really aren't part of our, you know, the, in many ways, they're not quite part of our culture yet because they're not aware of our standards completely. They're not, they haven't been around enough to know what the expectations are. So that has certainly been not just our freshmen, but our, our all of our junior college transfers too. They're still on a huge learning curve um, because of that lack of, I guess, intimacy, you know, in the clubhouse or having everybody together in one place. Um, it's tough to do that in two dimensions. It's a lot easier, not a lot easier, but it's certainly easier in three dimensions than it is two. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Maggie? Hi, Coach Maggie here from Hearst CT. Um, I was just wondering, you know, with the draft last year and how it was formatted, and then with, you know, you guys have a, a large incoming freshman class, what are the struggles with such a depth and this large roster, and how do you plan to balance that? Thanks, Maggie. Yeah, great question. We, um, you know, Tim Corbin of Vanderbilt, when the news first was being discussed about giving everybody another year, a do-over, you know, here's a guy who's done more to advance college baseball than I could ever dream to. And he said out loud to a group of us on a conference call with a lot of prominent coaches, not, I don't know how I snuck on it, but there are a lot of prominent coaches from around the country on it, on the call. And um, he said out loud, he goes, you know, I think this is going to be a problem. You know, you're, you're taking a pipe and putting water into both ends of it. At some point it's going to burst. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if we have the answer to that. I think in the coming days could be in the coming 24 hours in the coming weeks, in the coming months, we're going to learn a lot about that because right now I've got 44 
guys, actually 40, because we have four that are injured and are going to gray shirt, 40 that believe, and I hope they believe this, they're going to be in the lineup. They're going to be getting the ball in a big spot. They're going to, and it could be in the next hour, we're going to post our first travel list and we're leaving 19 players behind. So then what usually happens is there's a line and it looks like uh, a confessional in the Catholic church outside my door and wondering why. And so I, you can only play nine, 10 at a time if you're using the designated hitter. So I think we're still learning and we'll learn as to what the impact will be. But it, it hasn't been difficult yet because they're all competitors. They all believe in themselves. But I think when opportunities are going to be limited, you're going to learn a lot about that impact in the coming days and, and, and weeks. So um, I think junior colleges are going to be experiencing a real boom in talent level. I think some guys are going to be going to that level from the division one ranks um, just because there's just not enough, not going to be enough room in the next couple of years. So it's uh, yeah, I think Tim Corbin said it right. You know, the, the water is going to go in from both ends of the pipe at some point it's going to burst. So yeah, answer kind of, your question. Yeah. And then on the flip side of that, what is it like, you know, you do have a handful of returners, you know, that are coming back specifically, what is it like to have Chris back this year um, for what will be his senior, his senior season? I was really happy. I was really happy. I don't, it's not a concert here, by the way, if you hear the music, the soccer, the uh, PA is loud at the soccer stadium. Um, to have Chris back, it's like, it is like having, you know, I think Kyler said it, he's almost like a, a, an extra coach. Um, he does know our culture. He, he appreciates or he, he knows our standards and he can help me flatten that learning curve with those rookies. Um, I wanted to be sure that we were being respectful and courteous to Chris last spring when he was trying to decide, you know, if he, if he definitely did want to come back. And I didn't want to assume that that was the case. So we had a lot of real heart to hearts um, and I didn't want to sway him. I said, listen, you've done enough. You've emptied the tank every day for this program. And if you wanted to move on to something else, I will 100 percent support you. And uh, I know all the coaches and, and your teammates would feel the same way. He, he gave it some thought, like he does everything. He's he's um, such a bright kid, but really took the time to discuss it with his family. And um, and then when he was all in, I was I was uh, I I didn't have to um, hold back my emotions, you know. And I told him how excited I was to have him back. And um, you know, I think it's meant to be too. I mean, his brothers need to both brother both sets of brothers. I mean, they need to they need to have one full season together. Uh, for sure, one last full season together. Thank you. Yep. Rich? Hey, Coach, I'm Richard from UCTV. Hey, Rich. Uh, I just have a question. Uh, what's the biggest difference about being in the Big East this year, post the American? And what are you telling your players about joining the Big East for the first time for most of them? Uh, I, I haven't told them much about it, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a ways off. So we haven't, you know, we're playing an ACC opponent first. So we've been focused on them, but um, you know, I think one of the danger, one of the pitfalls is, is if you start thinking about the neighborhood you live in, as opposed to your own house, you can get in big trouble and um, you have to stay focused on your house and improving your house as best you can. And then the neighborhood can improve. I mean, I know when we went into the American, we weren't ready for that and um, had a rude awakening, had to make a lot of adjustments. And the neighborhood was, was really, really strong and really, really good. And we just focused on our house. And then eventually uh, we belonged in the neighborhood and we made the neighborhood better as a result. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we can do that with the Big East. We're going into a, a conference in which, um, you know, you guys can look up our one loss record against Seton Hall. It ain't pretty. You know, they've had our number for, uh, for, uh, uh, decades and decades. It's a very good program that Coach Shepard runs. You know, St. John's and us, I think we're tied, believe it or not. It's an unbelievable rivalry. I think it's 58 and 58 lifetime, you know, not lifetime, forever. Um, you know, so we've got tremendous amounts of respect for every program in the in the league. Uh, there's some that I don't know much about, you know, with Creighton and, and, uh, and Butler and Xavier. Um, they weren't in the league when we when we left it. Uh, or when they when the league left us, I should say. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to it. I think the biggest difference for me 
um, you know, those guys are trying to beat us. So there's not an awful lot different. Um, you know, certainly the food's going to be better. I'm going to get better Italian food and real bagels. And I got really sick of grits and barbecue over the last few years in the American. So that's the biggest difference for me personally. Luke. Hi, Jim. Um, so in terms of the, the, the conversation ahead of the season has really mainly been focused on just the boon of talent this year in college baseball. Like it's something really special. You're probably never going to see it again in our lifetimes. But um, how does that work with how uncertain the season seems to be? Like we saw with the fall seasons and the winter seasons that games were getting switched around on the fly. You talked about about scheduling earlier as well. How does uh, your depth really factor into just how uh, games could really change on the fly and everything could kind of get blown up? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to give you an honest answer. I don't know. I, I think we're, we're as well equipped as anybody um, with our with our depth. Um, you know, I guess you'd Boy, it'd be nice to have 44 guys have already contacted the vi virus in the last three months and have a little bit more security, knowing that we're going to be healthy. Um, but I would not wish that on my, on my guys. I don't want that. So I, I suppose if there are some teams out there that have depth and have had the virus and have gotten through it in the last three months, they're very well positioned, very well positioned um, to keep their guys healthy and on the field. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, we're not in that boat. We've had some guys that have contracted it. Um, I think around, uh, 20 or so guys, maybe a couple fewer than that, but, um, you know, some of them contracted it in August and September. So, um, we're not going to have that advantage, but, uh, I guess that would be the only real advantage. That would be the only kind of differentiation between teams with, with, uh, with really good depth. Switching gears a little bit, uh, you guys had uh, Springer come back and talk to the guys in the fall. How big is that for your program that you can have a guy of his stature to come back and speak to your program? You, you, there aren't too, too many college programs out there that have that luxury. No, the ones that we emulate um, and aspire to be like do have that, though. And um, so we're going to take advantage of any opportunity we have for our guys to learn from our big leaguers, our, our minor leaguers, and, and for that matter, our alumni that are in the professional world other than athletics too. So um, our guys know that when they sign on here that their responsibility, pillar four, is giving back. And I get a real kick out of the checks that I receive from, you know, Matt Barnes and the Matt Barnes bullpen. And in the memo line of the check, it, it might say uh, hashtag pillar four. And it just says, hey, I remember, you know, and I'm going to give back. Um, so we, uh, we take advantage of that, you know, and George came back and he was bummed out that he couldn't meet the guys in person. We had just kind of gone on a, uh, not a pause, but, uh, you know, we weren't able to get together, uh, as a team, but we were able to zoom and he took a base running quiz with them. And of course he aced it and he didn't have to study for it, but he was, he was, uh, he was awesome with the guys and he really didn't want to leave. You know, he, he gets around young people and he's a young person himself is like Peter Pan, um, you know, especially when it's with uh, baseball players and baseball people. So it was fun seeing his energy level kind of perk up when he saw those, all those faces on the zoom too. But uh, yeah, we, it, it I, I think it has a tremendous impact and we'd be foolish not to take advantage of, uh, of leveraging that, but uh, it's uh, not just George, but all of our big leaguers have been very generous with their time and, and uh, with their resources too. One last, one last one. Um, with how many big hitters and uh, very talented hitters you have in your lineup, who do you see taking the advantage of the DH spot the most this year? Oof, that's a great one. Um, I don't know exactly, but we have several candidates. And what I've learned is the DH spot is probably the biggest revolving door during the course of a season. Um, we have we have guys like Kieran Deveni, who's not going to catch every day because Pat Winkle is going to do the bulk of the catching. He's certainly going to catch. I like his right-handed power in our lineup. I like Kevin Ferrer's right-handed bat as well. He's an advanced hitter. He is um, an average 
uh, outfielder. Um, so he's going to have to see some DH at bats. Um, you know, we have a few other options, uh, but those are kind of the, the leading uh, candidates. Um, you know, Reggie's not going to be able to play every day at first base if he's pitching. So he may see some DH at bats. Ben Maycock is in the fold as a left-handed power guy. Um, so we've got a few, uh, a few guys, I think, that can, that can shoulder that load. It depends on what we're looking for that day. If we need power, we need on base, we need speed. Um, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different guys that can fill that, fill that role. So uh, it's a good problem to have. Thank you. You're welcome. Pat Winkler, All right, uh, we're going to go DH too when he's not when he's not catching. Pat's going to be DHing too. All right, we're going to go Gavin and then Randy. Um, we're kind of pushing up against the 12 o'clock uh, hour, so I don't know if we're going to get shut off from the Zoom since I put it. I think it's limited to one hour. So, Gavin, go ahead, and then Randy. Hopefully, can fit in your question as well. Jim Ben is obviously a talented pitcher, but what impresses you about his makeup? Incredible competitor, um, really engaging young guy uh, off the mound and very friendly, um, really down to earth. And then you put a ball in his hand and there's a hitter in the box and you see a different Ben Kasparius. He's got, uh, you know, blood shooting out of his eyes and is he's not, he's not nice. He's not fun to be around um, when he's pitching. Um, so I stay the hell away from him and I make coach McDonald take him out of inner squads. Um, I walk to the other end of the dugout, <laughs> but you know, his competitiveness is off the charts. I've been really, really impressed with him, um, taking on our hitters. And one more quick one. How has Kevin Ferrer improved from last year? He's worked a lot on his defense, Gavin, something that he really needs to work on. He has, uh, he is. He, he doesn't have a strong arm. He just has to hit the cutoff. He's gotten better at that. He understands how important that is. He's gotten more aggressive on ground balls in the outfield. He was very cautious, almost too cautious on balls on the ground, especially. He's done a good job uh, doing that. But he's, you know, I told him, I said, man, if you can just play adequate defense, um, make it hard on me to leave you out of that lineup. Because if you can just play adequate defense, you can really, really hit, and you're going to make me play you. So, um, you know, I, I, th I think he's improved a lot. There's still some room to grow, but uh, he's got an advanced approach at the plate. He really does. So I, I'd love to be able to play him. He's got pretty good speed, too. Um, just uh, needs to continue to get better in the outfield. Thanks and good luck. Thanks, Gavin. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Jonesy and Coach Penders, Randy Brochu. Uh, very glad to meet you. I'll be working with Jonesy in the booth and looking forward to covering your program this spring. Oh, great, Randy. All Thank right. Uh, I, I know there's not a clock in baseball, but I'm up against the clock. I want to yeah. ask you the mentality of a ball player, um, given this collective challenge we've all been through and patience, working your way out of slumps, making adjustments pitch to pitch. Do you think baseball players maybe are in a unique position? Um, as far as other athletes and all of us in this collective challenge we're in to kind of overcome the adversity we've all experienced the last year. Yeah, we do this stuff every day. You know, I mean, if you're successful set, uh, three out of 10 times, you're considered great. So we're used to falling down and picking ourselves back up, you know, baseball players in general. And I think we're also used to moving game times around, you know, um, <laughs> weather getting in the way, certainly. Um, so I think we're, we're very well equipped when you take a look at other, you know, I've been listening to basketball coaches bitch and complain about moving games and, and um, you know, how can we do that? We'd only have three days off between games and this, and you know, I'm not saying our basketball coach would be like that. There's no way, but I've heard a lot of them around the country uh, complaining about having to move, move games around to, to compete. We're used to that. You know, it's uh, anytime, any place, let's, let's go, let's play. And um, uh, we play more games than anybody else. So we travel more than anybody else. We're on the road more than anybody else. We're used to uh, having to fight those battles. So I think we are well equipped. We'll see how we do with it. But uh, there's no question that baseball coaches and players are the most well equipped of, uh, of, of college athletics teams to, to handle all the challenges that are going to come our way. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Um, 
we'll uh, we'll be in touch again. As I said before, uh, we don't know what we're doing in terms of media yet, but we will definitely have something in place before that March 23rd home opener uh, against CCSU. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.